Okay, Jesse Stout, please. I hope you're not going to read it. Hi there. Uh, thanks for having me, everyone. And thanks very much to Representative Slater for his very eloquent testimony. I'm here as Executive Director of RIPAC, Rhode Island Patient Advocacy Coalition. RIPAC advocates for Rhode Island's medical marijuana patients. Um, we publish our website, ripatients.org, as well as our monthly newsletter to let people know what's going on with medical marijuana in Rhode Island. We had 52 licensed patients and caregivers at our last meeting in February. Uh, right now, Rhode Island's Medical Marijuana Act protects 602 licensed patients, as well as 504 primary caregivers for those patients. These patients have been recommended medical marijuana by 229 Rhode Island physicians, about a 3 to 1 ratio of patients and doctors right now. Of these, our organization, RIPAC, is in touch with almost 200 patients and about 120 caregivers from all over the state. There are about 30 licensed patients who have showed up to the House and Senate hearings today, including a bunch of folks in this room right now. Um, I'd like to make available to the committee a map of where patients are located in Rhode Island by time, um, as well as a list of organizations who have endorsed medical marijuana in Rhode Island. 15 statewide groups, most notably the Medical Society, Nurses Association, and State Council of Churches. Um, other than that, I just want to point out, as Representative Slater said, this bill would solve the supply problem of having medical marijuana by taking it away from the black market altogether. The Department of Health would simply license this nonprofit compassion center to grow and distribute marijuana for patients. In respect to the question that Representative Slater received, the Compassion Center would have to meet strict regulations for not only record keeping, but also security. The bill even states it has to have an alarm system, motion detectors, and so on and so forth. Um, to get started, the patient could appoint the Compassion Center as one of their two primary caregivers, and the Compassion Center could then grow the medical marijuana for the patient. And you'll hear today from several patients who feel that uh, not only should patients be able to get medical marijuana from this Compassion Center, but also be able to grow medical marijuana collectively. We strongly agree with this position. Um, the only news on this bill since last year is, first of all, as Representative Slater said, the Attorney General of the United States of America, Eric Holder, said last Wednesday, February 25th, that ending DEA raids on such facilities is now American policy. And other than that, the Rhode Island Senate passed this bill last year by vote of 30 to 5. And finally, uh, the New Mexico Department of Health has just last month become the first state to license nonprofit producers of medical marijuana. I have here written testimony from the administrator of the medical cannabis program at the New Mexico Department of Health, which I'll make available to the committee now. <laughs> if anyone has testimony, can you please give it to us before you get up here? It's very disruptive to the committee to be watching this. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's uh, all California have. doesn't have medical. I thought they had. Uh, there are states, including California, where there are dispensaries that sell medical marijuana to patients, but there's no state-level regulations like we're proposing here. Oh, really? Um, in California, there's no one to tell them when or where or how. Here we have the whole list of proper health department rules to go over that for them. Very good. Are there any questions for Mr. Stout? Thank you very much. Thank That's you very much for hearing me today.